welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website. The pediatric musculoskeletal disorders. So the first one is developmental dysplasia of the hips. This is an abnormal development of the hip, head of the femur, which is not in the proper place. So signs and symptoms for the neonate is shortening of the limb on the affected side, restricted abduction of the hip on the affected side, so limited range of motion, unequal of the gluteal and thigh folds. They'll have a positive ortholantic click, so this is when the examiner abducts the thighs, applies gentle pressure forward over the gen greater trochanter and a clicking sensation indicates dislocating the femoral head and moving into the vestibulum. Then they'll also have a positive Barlow's test where the examiner adducts the hips and applies pressure down and the back with the thumbs and can feel the femoral head move out of the vestibulum. So nursing interventions depend on the age. So birth to six months, there'll be splinting of the hips with a pavlic harness continuously to maintain flexion, abduction, and external rotation, worn continuously for three to six months. Then at six to 18 months, there'll be a gradual reduction by traction if necessary, a hip spike, a cast for two to four months, then flexion abduction is applied for three months, and the older child may need an operative reduction in reconstitution. Then we have deformities, and there are some different ones. So we have a congenital club foot. This is a deformity of the ankle and foot. Our nursing interventions are manipulation and casting performed weekly until eight to 12 weeks of age, and they may need surgery. Then we have idiopathic scoliosis. So this is a spinal deformity that involves lateral curvature or spinal rotation. Nursing interventions are diagnosed during pre-adolescent growth spurt, asymmetry of the ribs and hips when the child bends forward, which is called the Adams test, and monitor progression, they may need surgery or a brace. Then we have Marfran syndrome. So this is a disorder of connective tissue that affects the skeletal, cardiac, eyes, and skin systems. These patients' bodies will be tall and thin, and they'll usually have vision and cardiac problems. So we want to monitor for vision problems and curvature of the spine. They may need cardiac meds and instruct the patients that the child should not play competitive or athletics or contact sports. Then we have leg calf parethes disease, which is a condition that affects the hip joint where the femur and pelvis meet. Blood supply is interrupted and the femoral head begins to die. We'll start to see patients with limping, pain, and stillness in the hip, groin, thigh, or knees with limited range of motion. They'll need for nursing interventions, PT using crutches, casting, nighttime brace, and surgery may be needed. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.